Well, those of you that have followed me, you know that one of the things I love to do is travel around the world calling game, especially dangerous game. Some years ago, I went to Ontario, Canada and called wolves. And we called two of them in, very successful hunt. But I was hunting with a rifle then. Since that time, I've kind of developed a style of calling them up close and shooting them with a shotgun. As best we could tell from research, no one's called a wolf up close and shot it with a shotgun. So I got my Stoger Predator gun. I'm headed off to Alberta, Canada, middle of February, calling wolves. So I'm headed to north central Alberta, a place where they have so many wolves that they don't even have a limit on them. You don't have to tag them. They are having to trap them up there. Actually, the government is shooting them out of helicopters up there. So a lot of wolves in this area ought to be a good place to call. North we go. We're hunting with Jim Mercier, Far North Outfitters. Jim's one of the more experienced, better wolf hunters in that area. When he's not hunting with clients like myself, he traps wolves for some of the agricultural people around there. You know, being from Louisiana, I don't do cold weather really good. And to go to this place, gather up all kinds of anything that'll keep you warm. And the week before I was there, it was 36 below zero. And I get there, it's about 30 something degrees at the airport. And the forecast said it's gonna get warmer and warmer and warmer every day. My cameraman was telling Jim about how I carry rain everywhere I go. If you need some rain, I come, it rains. And so Jim immediately began to blame me for the warm weather, which is not good for wolf hunting. We've been specializing in wolf hunting and whitetail hunting. Our, our primary is whitetail, but we've We've, we're kind of full-time wolf hunters. We've been that way for you know 20 years, and uh, the weather, we've never seen anything like it, and I'll just have to blame that on Terry. Jim's somewhat of a, a wolf a predator control person. He has this network of people all over that area who are spotting wolves for him, and they're putting out baits, and uh, they'll call if some wolves are hitting the bait. And so the first couple of days, we drive around, check all the baits. He's talking to the scouts. The idea is just to find some wolves that are active in an area and we can go to that area and call. We actually set up fairly close to a couple of baits he got and called, but we didn't get any response. Well, after a couple of days, we're just not getting any activity in the vicinity of Jim's ranch. And talking to his scouting people, one of his scouts says in an area about 250 miles north that they are seeing a lot of wolves in an area of a lot of oil activity. They've built some new roads in there. All trucks are coming and going. They're reporting that the wolves are not paying much attention to the, to the oil trucks. They tell us where it is. Jim knows pretty close to where that's at. So we take off in that area to see what we can find out about these wolves. The day before we go, Jim sends one of his hands up with a moose, a roadkill moose they found uh, for a bait. So he goes up and along a wooded creek, which is an excellent place, he deposited this moose for a bait. So the first thing we do when we get there is go check that moose to see if it has any fresh sign. Weather is beautiful, Jim. Yeah, you did it again to us. We got the curse that follows you. It's, uh, you know, it's like plus eight, which would be what, like 45, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, 45 degrees, yeah. It's t-shirt weather for us. And, uh, you know, it makes things a little tougher because, you know, wolves are wearing coats that are set up for 50 below right now. We had we had over 40 below Fahrenheit here about 10 days ago. We had an extreme weather warning. And then the day this guy arrives, it's above zero. Everywhere I go, it rains. I can bring rain to the desert if you need it. But up here, I just bring warm weather, pleasant weather, you know, kind of sunshiny and beautiful. You know? Yeah, it's pleasant for hunting, but it's not ideal wolf hunting conditions. Let's sneak down here and see if we can find this bait and see what's going on. From that, we can make a plan. That's right. All right. There was a slight bit of uh, sign there. There was a single track indicates that one wolf had found this bait and it fed a little bit. So we decided to uh, ease back, wait till right before dark. Right before dark, we'd call this one bait. Where they put the bait is pretty open right along this creek and it's snow covered. And so we go in there and we get on the opposite side of the bait. We sneak in there, we get up on the hill where we can see over the whole uh, valley and we can also see the bait. And we set up and we call. No activity, but it was a great learning experience, a good way to kind of figure out your technique 
for calling in these types of areas. As I said, this place is about 250 miles from uh, Jim's ranch, so we're seeing enough whoops down here, we think our, probably our best bet is just to uh, uh, check into one of these little local motels and stay here for a few days to see what we can work out in this area. Same time he's talking to scouts back down around his ranch. If they get something hot going on down there, we can decide if we want to stay here or go back. But for now, we're going to check in the hotel, hunt close by. This segment was brought to you by Stoger. Works as hard as you do. All right, we've... Now there's a second wolf track, a much bigger one. They've eaten a little bit more. And on top of that, they've taken the moose head and left with it. So we know we have some wolf activity going on around this moose bait. We do have quite a few ravens working around this uh, uh, moose bait, this moose carcass we got. You know, ravens uh, uh, and crows and hawks and all those uh, predatory type birds are really good for predator hunting because predators learn to watch those and they can hear like a raven for a long, long way and they can tell the sound that they make when they're kind of squabbling over a bait. So it's really good for predator hunting if you've got uh, birds of prey uh, working over your bait. And we've collected a pretty good collection of ravens around this moose bait, so that part's encouraging. Well, late that afternoon, we're gonna make a call and um, we don't really have a big wide open spot to call it from. So what we do is get uh, on the road that's going into this moose bait. We don't go to the bait. We stop on the road and we kind of back off in the trees on either side, put the collar out in the road with the decoy running, thinking if they're over on the bait, we don't want to disturb them, but if they'll come to the call, they're going to run right by us. They'll be like 15 yards away. It's not the best tactic in the world, but it's the best one we had available to us for this site. If they would have come, it would have been some close up action, but no response. Okay, next morning we wake up. It's been raining in the night, sleeting a little bit in the night. It's right on the freezing line. Last couple of days we've been scouting. All around this area is a lot of wolf signs. Some of it's several days old. Snow's melting and refreezing. It's really hard to tell, but we put a bait not too far from here yesterday. We kind of figured out what area these wolves are running in because we'd move out of their tracks in any direction we went to. There's a slough down here, a big open slough on a creek, big wide open area to call. It's about three quarter of a mile from when we put a deer bait out yesterday. 
we, we think it's better. It's been hard to find calling sites here because the trees are so thick. We've been having to call where they cleared out for all pad or something, which is not the best, but this is a big natural opening down here right in the middle of the sign. We think it's going to be a good place to call. Whether or not they'll come or not, it's supposed to be snowing this morning, but before daylight it was raining, it's just barely above freezing, so I don't think it's going to snow. I hope it don't rain anymore. Set down, got a good looking setup. We can see all over that uh, bottom. We call, we use various sounds, but uh, no response. Well, when we leave this calling area, we decided we'd go by and check our, our deer bait to see if anything hit it during the night. We go there, when we get there, the bait has not been fed upon. So uh, Jim decided that maybe because we chained it to that tree, they didn't like to chain, but for some reason, the ravens or the wolves didn't come hit the bait. We decided we would uh, uh, scout around, and in our scouting, it would lead us back over to where the moose bait was, where it had two tracks on it the day before. Real curious to see what happened at night. Obviously, the wolves are only feeding at the night, so uh, from one day to the next, you can kind of see what the activity was. When we got there, there's fresh sign there again on the moose. More meat's been eaten. We find the trail where they drug the head off, and about 100 or so yards out in the woods, went out there that eaten all the meat off the moose head, so Obviously, there are wolves working this bait. Obviously, they're not close by in the daylight hours. So we keep on scouting. We go on past the moose bait this time. You get over there, there's a big old lake froze over that way. So, you know, that's probably a pretty good calling place. We go on past the lake and get out to where we have a fairly open area. We get out and we call that. Still no response. You know, what Jim thinks is gonna happen is sooner or later, some or all of this pack of wolves that's in that area is going to find this moose bait that these two wolves are on and come to it. Has not happened yet, so what we're going to do is go back, not call right on the moose bait because we don't want to bump them off. We're going to go back and set up in uh, fairly close proximity to it and uh, see if we can call one out in that open creek bottom. So we're in the bottom, the same bottom that we called from the first time we called this moose bait, but we went to a better location thinking we'd have a little better visibility. And we called till dark, too dark to film, and uh, still nothing, you know, so all the evidence says that there's no activity in the daylight hours. Our only activity is in, in the dark hours. So for our last day this far up, we decided the best plan is to go call in the vicinity of the moose bait. That's the only place we got any real fresh activity. So leave way before daylight, get in there uh, pretty close to the moose bait. Uh, just as it gets first light, we sit down, we set up another ambush type hunt. This time we get a little wider spot in the road. We get off the road in the timber to the side, put the collar slightly past us. So if the wolf came to the collar, he'd run right in front of us, but still no activity. So it's become pretty obvious now that uh, the wolves are only moving in the cooler hours of the night. It's just, I think the heat's just messed up our wolf hunt. And Jim is steady cussing me about bringing this heat wave in. But if I did, I don't know what I did to cause it to happen, but I have to agree with Jim on one thing. It is messing up the wolf hunting. So it's back to the hotel, get our gear, check out. Uh, we got about three and a half hours to get back to uh, Jim's ranch and we want to check a couple of spots on the way back in. We're going to go to the moose bait that we checked the very first time on day one. So we decided to stop, you know, about a half a mile from that bait in a pretty good opening, a pretty good road opening, go in there and call before we go check the bait. That way if some wolves are on the bait, we have a good chance of calling them before they know anything's in the area. So we stop and call, actually we probably call for 30, 40 minutes, which is longer than I would typically call for anything other than a wolf, but we got no response. So we decided to go check the bait. So we drive up to the bait. And um, when you get pretty close, you can see it's been destroyed. So they've eaten everything on this entire moose, uh, scraped the bones, even broke a bottle of bones open and uh, ate the marrow out of the bones. So obviously there was a whole pack of wolves been feeding on this bait. Probably for most of the time, we've been 250 miles north chasing the wolves in the oil field. Well, we hunted hard for a week. We did everything we knew to do. Jim's real knowledgeable about wolves. It just didn't work out. We probably shouldn't have been here this year anyway, 
But we have to go back to the year prior to tell you the whole story. The year before, we came and hunted with Jim, and I brought my good buddy Skip Knowles. Skip is editor of Predator Nation magazine. And he had told me on numerous occasions that he had hunted wolf, but he had never taken one. And he talked to some hunters, and they didn't want to put him on the Jim's hunt. So he recruited me, and I said, okay, come on, go with me. We'll go kill a wolf. I really wanted to kill one with a shotgun. So we made a little plan. We were going to call. I was going to be on the stand with a shotgun. Skip was going to be on the stand with the rifle. If he come 50 yards or under, I was going to shoot him with a shotgun. If he hung up outside of that, Skip was going to get him with the rifle. Sound like it ought to be a good plan. On the third day, Jim gets a, a scouting report from up north, up around Athabasca, Alberta, the Athabasca River. Wow, country up there, I love it. So we head off up that way, and uh, uh, right before dark, in a big bend of the river, uh, Jim howls, and the wolves howl back at him. They're not that far off, so we sneak in there, and we set up, and um, we call at them. And we can make them howl at us, but we can't make them come in. So we call at them till dark, and they just won't come. Jim's pretty sure they got a fresh kill right where they at, and we just unsuccessful at calling them off that kill. At least we've located wolves, we know where they at. That is step one in calling them, you got to know where they at. But where wolves are, the country is so big that you can be calling and there's no wolf within uh, hearing distance of your sound. The night we were up calling on the Athabasca River, uh, one of Jim's hands there uh, reported to us that he heard a lone howl in one of Jim's pastures. So uh, the next morning, we're gonna slip in there at daylight, see if we can call that single wolf. So we get up the next morning, first light, we start sneaking out over towards where he heard the lone howl of the one wolf. It's snowing, it's cold, all the conditions are looking good. We sneak in there, there's a little opening in there. We set up, we set our call out in the opening, we hide in some trees. We start playing the moose calf in the stress sound. It wasn't long until here come a wolf headed our way. Here, there's not even a limit on it. They just destruct it to the to the livestock, you know. So after you ate on the bait, we came in here this morning and set up fairly close to the bait, not not right on top of it, fairly close to it, and uh, started calling. Wolf shows up over here, starts this way, gets out here about 50 yards. I was hoping he was gonna get close enough to shoot him with a shotgun, but. You know, Skip shot the wolf. I needed two more steps and I could shoot him with the shotgun. But, you know, Skip really, really wanted to kill a wolf. I'd killed a wolf before, I'd called a wolf before, I'd killed it. So, um, actually, Jim, the outfitter, was kind of upset that we didn't get him with a shotgun. But, you know, I'd like to got him with a shotgun, but I really wanted Skip to kill a wolf. So, there's one up and one down, but I think the up's more than the down. So, glad Skip got a wolf. 
Well, the last two years hunting with Jim has been great. There's a lot of wolves, a lot of game in that area. Jim really knows wolves, but you can see what an important factor weather plays uh, in uh, predator calling, especially in wolf calling. Not anything we can do about the weather. It was just unfortunate what happened, but it's a great place to hunt. And maybe next year I'll go back and try it and leave Skip at home. If you'd like to hunt with Jim, he's one of the most successful and knowledgeable wolf hunters that I have met. Uh, he has a great area. And so even though we didn't kill a wolf on one of our hunts, that's pretty rare for Jim. He almost always takes a wolf on every hunt. We're gonna put his information on the bottom of the screen, but the best way to get to him is just go to mojooutdoors.com. Go to the TV link, go to the Outfitter link, it'll link right there. It'll say Jim Mercier, Far North Outfitters. Click on it, it'll give you a phone number. Call Jim, I know he'd love to hear from you. But that's about all the time we got for today. For all of us at Mojo, I'm Terry Denman. God bless you. We'll see you again next week. All hunts seen on Mojo TV are fair chase.